Hello everyone, it's Tom from Coa Joint here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. It's been really good to take a couple of days off over the Christmas period, but unfortunately it's back to work now. Um, before I actually get into the video, I'd like to make a couple of announcements. Uh, the first one being for anyone who's been following my tutorial series. Um, in the new year, I'm going to be creating a, a whole new series of videos on creating an editor extension from start to finish. Um, so if you're interested in learning about editor extensions in Unity and how they work with the, uh, the, the Unity software itself, then that will go right from basics to creating a pretty powerful um, cutscene editor, uh, which I've actually used itself. And although it's really as an example for my videos, it's actually pretty useful. Um, so if you want to keep tabs on uh, the progress of that series, then please subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, that will be straight to your YouTube account when that goes online. The second announcement that I'd like to make is that my software Coa Joint Action Orbit and the software bundle will hopefully be available on the Asset Store in the new year. Um, we had a few delays over the last few months, but uh, they've all been sorted out now and we're just applying the finishing touches. So if you don't know anything about them, then uh, please look at the links in the description below or check out other videos on this channel. Um, I'm really excited to see how they get on and um, hopefully they'll make your games uh, better with the opportunities that they provide. Uh, but for now, let's get straight onto this uh, video tutorial, which will be on creating an undo and redo feature in editor extensions. So let's just open up what we're actually going to be creating this video. Um, this is a window, which is a wrapper for a very simple class. It's got an integer field, so nothing else apart from numbers in there, and a string field. So let's just write a simple message. Merry Christmas. And um, when I press the undo button here, you'll see that it's actually undoing every step I took here. Um, and then if I press the redo button, you'll see that they actually return. Uh, at the moment, I've got it so it only record the last 10 undo actions. But um, you'll see that the design that we're going to be using is very flexible. We could have it 20, 30, 40, depending on how much memory you want to um, uh, partition for undo and redo actions. Uh, so it's very simple. That's what we're going to be creating first of all, and then we're actually going to show this implemented in software. So you see it's not just uh, something that works in an isolated case, it actually works in production software. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move over to MonoDevelop and um, we'll go a little bit about the theory behind it or the actual data structure we're going to be using, and uh, then I'll show you the code. So here we are in MonoDevelop. And uh, before I show you the implementation details, I thought it would be a good place to start by showing you the class that uh, the window wraps. Um, first of all, you'll notice that this class serializable item has um, a serializable attribute. Um, so if you haven't seen my, my previous video on serializing in Unity, I highly recommend that you watch that first, as um, it will explain more of the details about how we're actually going to do this. Um, but if you have, then please feel free to carry on. Um, what we're actually going to be doing is, um, and this is the general principle behind undo and redo structures, we're going to take all of the data that we want to apply, uh, that we want to store in our undo and redo sort of system, and we're going to serialize it to a byte array. So then we don't have to worry about any implementation details. We're just going to store it as a byte array, um, serialize it as a byte array, really, and then we deserialize it with every undo action. Um, that binary data, or that byte array, sorry, um, will then be stored on a um, finite stack, so a stack of a finite size, where um, with every undo action that goes over the size of the stack, it kicks one off the end, so you can only have sort of, um, say, 10 um, um, undo actions stored on the stack. So basically what happens is that the state of the uh, window will be serialized, then pushed onto the stack, and then that will carry on with push, push, push more events on until the size of the stack is um, um, met. And then with every other um, item, every other byte array that we push onto the stack, we're, we'll be popping one off the end. Well, not really popping, we'll be sort of um, deleting it off the end of the stack. And uh, I'll show you the data structure that I've actually used to do this in a moment. Um, so this is a class here that we're going to be serializing for this example and then using for undo structure. You see here it's got an integer field and a string field. Um, these two methods here, uh, get byte and load, allow us to serialize this class, this serializable class, as a byte array. So you can see this get bytes method here returns a byte array. 
and uh, as, as I showed in the previous video what we're doing is we're opening up a memory stream and the binary formatter um, we serialize the um, class to the memory stream using the binary formatter and then we use the two array method to return that memory stream as a byte array um, the load method here returns a class um, from a byte array um, it deserializes it here using the deserialize method um, we then check to make sure that it's of the right type so the object that we return is a serializable item and then we return it uh, so that's all there is to the serializable item class now let's move on to the finite stack so um, you might think that to implement a stack that it would obviously the obvious candidate is to use a stack but the problem with a stack is that we need a finite stack and a normal stack class will have limitless size um, so in order to kick things off the 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 sort of the beginning of the stack um, we need to get access to the first member of the stack the finite stack and the best way to do this I found is using a generic linked list now you might have heard of uh, linked lists if you've done any C programming but basically a linked list is is really good for any um, data structure where you need to have access to any point in the list and um, you you want to be able to insert um, data into any point into the list as well um, you could have used many other data, uh, any other uh, some other data structures here for example a normal list uh, but I've gone with linked list because um, it has some fairly convenient uh, methods on it for what we want to do so this is our generic class here finite stack um, if you haven't gone into any generics uh, before I'll just give you a quick introduction um, this little symbol here T means that we um, and the uh, these, these brackets here I don't know what they're called um, um, arrowed brackets I'll just call them for a moment that says that we're going to create a finite stack that can apply for any class T here so we could have a finite stack of integers or a finite stack of byte arrays as we'll be using in a moment and uh, we're going to inherit from a linked list a generic linked list here as well so um, this constant integer here size is the size of the finite stack that we want uh, we want to peak on the where well, there's um, every stack that um, you would have seen before has a peak, a pop, and a push method. Uh, so we've just implemented these here. Uh, the peak allows us to check what's on the top of the stack. So we're just having a look at the the last member on the linked list, or the finite stack even. The pop will take the um, the first uh, the last member of the finite stack off it. So we just get the last node and if it's not null we return it um, else this is something to note as well when you're using a generic class you can't just return null because you might actually be using a non nullable type a value type for example so an integer unless it's a nullable integer uh, doesn't have a null um, you, you can't return null when you should be returning an integer so you have to return default t here so t is the generic class that we would be returning um, so that's the pop and then the push thing, uh, the push method, sorry, um, is the the one which allows us to actually implement this finite stack size. What we do is we create a node of the latest value here, and then we add it onto the list. So add last onto the uh, the linked list or the finite stack here. If the size of the finite stack is greater than our um, constant size here then we remove first so that's where using the linked list structure has uh, proved to be really useful there um, so as you can see our finite stack that we're going to be using for our undo and redo um, system is actually very simple um, you can add some more bells and whistles but uh, this is this is all I really need it for and it's good enough for this tutorial um, so now let's have a look at how we've actually implemented this so this is the uh, stack testing uh, window the, uh, the class behind the window that we saw uh, a few minutes ago in the edit uh, unity editor um, you'll see here it inherits from editor window which allows us to actually uh, open up a window itself and um, the only members of this uh, class are the undo stack uh, the redo stack and a current serializable item so that's the class that we're going to uh, that contains our integer in our string now um, undo stack and redo stack redo stacks are finite stacks of uh, byte arrays so remember uh, from just a moment ago finite stack was a generic class and uh, this time we're going to um, specify it to be a finite stack of byte arrays and uh, that's because we want to serialize um, the current 
serializable item class to a byte array and then store that on um, on, on our um, undo and uh, redo stacks. Um, okay, so all we're doing here is uh, when the window is opened, we just uh, initialize our undo redo stacks and also our, our um, current serializable item. So remember when we open up this window here, uh, the message that it says is hello and uh, the integer is zero. So that's all we're doing there. Now, uh, the uh, the GUI in the on GUI method that's where um, really all the interesting stuff happens. Um, first of all, um, don't don't worry too much about the implementation details here. But all we're doing here is um, when we enter a new value into the um, the integer uh, field, so the int field here or the text field here, all we're doing is we're pushing um, a serialized um, so a byte array of the serialized item onto our undo stack so we push it onto the top of the undo stack here so current si that's the current serializable item we call the gets byte bytes method so that serializes the current serializable item as a byte array and then we push it onto our undo stack now um, you recall here from the window that we've got a undo and a redo button so let's have a look at the implementation of those here so when we press the undo button, what we want to do is we want to pop off the undo stack the most recent um, serialized item. Uh, that will be returned as a byte array. So um, this is what we do here. This is We're popping off the top of the undo stack a byte array. And then we want to load that uh, byte array to be a serializable item. So that's exactly what we're doing there. And then we set the current serializable item to the um, the serializable item that we just deserialized and then we repaint the editor so it's a very simple procedure really we take the most recent undo event we turn it back into a serializable item and then we replace the current serializable item with the one that we just deserialized and that's the whole undo process um, now you'll notice that I skipped over one line of code here which is this line here which is the redo uh, redo stack uh, when we undo we want to redo as well and to implement that what we have to do is uh, we need to push onto the redo stack here so that when uh, everything that we undo we need to redo here we need to keep ta uh, track of that on the redo stack it's a, it's a similar process with the um, the redo um, when we press the redo button here um, so that this method here um, when we redo we want to be able to undo our redos as well so we need to push the current serializable item onto the undo stack and then we get a byte array of the most recent item on the redo stack so we pop it off the top and then we deserialize that byte array to be a serializable item and then we replace our current the reference to our current serializable item with the one that we just serialized prev here and um, that's really all there is to the method these two methods here repeating exactly what I just said a moment ago um, so let's just go back to our um, window here and just test it out once more Let's delete that. We'll put in uh, n n n n n here. Let's undo all of those. So it comes back. We can redo them, undo them again. Let's change this number six seven eight nine ten. Uh, let's undo that, and then you'll see it works exactly as we'd expect. Um, so that's a very simple example. I'm now going to move over to my software, load that up in a moment, and I'll show you this in a more complicated example, but the principle is exactly the same. So here we are in uh, my piece of software, the software bundle. I'm not going to go into any details about what this software actually does, uh, but as you'll see, this is a fully functioning piece of software. Uh, we've got a lot of complicated stuff going on here. Um, you know, it's, it's a fully fledged editor extension. Um, so now let's just show you the undo and redo feature here. Um, as I move, uh, you just saw that I moved a uh, skill. This is called here, this thing called heat here, I just moved. Um, I'm just gonna press the undo button now and you'll see that it moved back into the place it was here. Um, let's move these around a bit. So let's press undo twice, one, two, and you can see it's replaced those as well. Um, you'll see that there's some numbers here. Uh, let's just change the values of those. Let's change that to 100 and let's change that to uh, 23 and let's press undo again and you'll see that those numbers have changed back to what they were before um, let's delete a skill and let's uh, undo that 
and then we can read it, redo it or then we can uh, undo that change again. Um, so you can see this does actually work, this exact same system and uh, you have to believe me when I say that the uh, implementation here was incredibly uh, similar to the one that I've just showed you that um, this does actually work as uh, exactly as you would expect and um, I'm very happy with this, um, I'm very happy to use it in my software as well um, so I hope you find a use for it too. Um, so thank you very much for watching, uh, please stay tuned in the new year as uh, there will be plenty of new content coming and uh, thank you for um, your support through this year, it's been a great year and um, let's hope that 2004 is uh, even better. Uh, thanks very much and uh, happy new year, cheers.